I'm Nick Boy and welcome to Ask Pocket, where you ask and then I write, and then Pete records, and then John edits, and then Sam uploads, and then Pocket. Our first question comes in from Wraithlock01. Do you think that we should have multiplayer subscription fees on consoles when it is free everywhere else? Interesting question, Mr. or Mrs. Lock. Console subscription fees have existed for so long, it's like we don't even question them anymore. It's like Keith Richards. Xbox Live goes back to 2002, and back then it made more sense to pay. Console online multiplayer gaming was less common, and you paid for the privilege of Xbox giving you something above and beyond. The biggest thing your subscription is paying for is multiplayer servers. Servers are expensive, and keeping them running costs a lot of money. But then so does your console, and the games, and the internet connection you also pay for. The reason it is free on PC and mobile is because the publishers are usually hosting these servers themselves. Or it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Of course, some games on console still use peer-to-peer -peer hosting, but Xbox and PlayStation are still managing that ecosystem. Right now, both Xbox and PlayStation offer free games with their subscriptions, though. Games with Gold and PS Plus are actually kind of good deals just on their own. You get a few free games a month, and you might get lucky and get Oli Oli 2 or Fury or Banner Saga 2 on release day for free. You also get discounts, and Xbox has added dedicated servers. But it's like they've added all these features on top to hide the fact that you still have to pay for the privilege to play games on their service. Of course, you could not pay for it, but almost every single game that comes out now has a multiplayer component to it. In my opinion, and I am talking out of my butt here because I have no insight into their financial operations and I have a larynx in my colon, I would spin off multiplayer so it's just free for everyone. And I bet a bunch of people would still pay the 10 bucks a month for those free games with PS Plus and Gold. But there's no reason for them to actually do it because we've been paying the subscription fee for so long. Why would they change it? We already pay for it. It's probably going to take one of them losing the console race so badly that they drop it as an incentive. A little surprising Xbox haven't done that already, but with the Xbox Play Anywhere program, they're thinking that that is now their unique selling point. Until then though, we pay to play. Moving on now, and our next question comes in from Maiden Muse. Can you tell me a joke? I need some cheering up. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Miss Muse. I've got a good one just for you. Knock, knock. I'll wait for your response and then we'll finish it then. Moving on, and now it's time for Gazra 1971. Innovative and superb new game design has been mostly non-existent since the early 2000s. What can be done to improve this? Gazra, I... I how... Gaz, I just fundamentally disagree with your statement. I kind of can't believe you just said that. Are you talking game genres? Because I understand that not every month we've got a new game genre, but that's because you just can't keep up that pace. I mean, a few decades ago, we went from zero game genres existing to all the game genres existing. You just can't keep up making all new genres every week. RPGs have been around for decades, but Skyrim painted a world and let you exist in it like no game from the 90s. That idea wasn't new, but it was superbly designed. Shooters are old as hell, but Team Fortress 2 refined that class-based idea into an art, and Overwatch and its like are picking up from where it left off. Puzzle games go back to Tetris, but the Stanley Parable is one, and so is Portal and The Witness, and they're all completely different than shuffling blocks around as they drop from the sky. Uncharted 2 brought scope and executed it like it really hadn't been seen before. In Grand Theft Auto 5, you can follow a character on the street for 20 minutes and watch them live an actual life. They won't repeat dialogue, they'll have their own stories. As for new genres, MMOs started in the 90s, but they didn't hit their stride until the mid-noughts. MOBAs, Super Mario Maker, survival games like Don't Starve or Rust or DayZ, Rocket League is car soccer. Car soccer, Gaz! Her story is an FMV adventure puzzle guitar lesson game. In fact, all adventure games in general. They started off as text-based games, and now they're Telltale and Beginner's Guide and Firewatch and games that make you feel, Gazra! Journey, Counter-Strike, Tearaway, Papers, Please, FTL, Little Big Planet, Dark Souls, all driving games, Minecraft, f***ing Minecraft, Gazra. Then you get new games with new tech. Sure, most Wii games suck, but Wii Sports was goddamn fun and was something you'd never played before, Gaz. VR is gonna bring with it all kinds of new games, just look at Job Simulator. Oh, this whole argument that older games are better games just bugs me. Older games are older games, you got that right. Older games are games that people who write the best games of all times list played when they were kids. Older games, yes, absolutely laid the foundations for now. 
But in 50 years time, put Secret of Monkey Island and The Walking Dead Season 1 in front of someone who has never heard of either of them, and I would put good money on them saying that The Walking Dead is the superior game. I take Call of Duty 4 shooting over Doom, I take The Last of Us story over Final Fantasy 7. Sure, there are way more games now than ever before, and that can make it seem like things are more similar because you get 10 games that are all kind of identical. But to ignore the smaller iterations happening within each one of those games is to doom yourself to disappointment, Gazra. Our final question comes in from Laura Catherine. What does a good game office love about Nick Foy? My eyes! Well, Sam wrote here, they don't. All right, that's it for today's episode of Ask Pocket. My pocketeers, have you got an ask? Let me know in the comments below or tweet me with the hashtag Ask Pocket. Gazra, I'm sorry I yelled at you, but if you want to see new game genre, I played survival game Near Death about surviving in Antarctica. That is up on our YouTube channel today. All right, that is it. Until we next ask, my pocketeers, Nick Boyer.